Hey, Steve Nani here doing the junkyard crawl at Berniston Auto Wrecking in Berniston, Mass. Now, I'm 58 years old, so like, I don't know, 45 years ago or 50 years ago, something like that, I used to ride a school bus like this to elementary school between first and sixth grades. Ours was a Ford, but this one is a GMC with something kind of weird under the hood. Now, most people think that a bus of this size is going to have a V8, right? And they mostly did and do. Well, not here. If we come in closer, we'll see this one. This is a 1968 GMC 5500 series bus chassis, but look at this, V6. Oh yeah, V6 engine. You're thinking, nah, that's from a pickup truck, right? Nope. The GMC V6 engine is right, right here. I just don't want to get decapitated. There we go. And here it is. This is the GMC V6. Now, the thing with the V6 engine was that it, it was narrow. It's a 60 degree V, not a 90. So it was quite narrow. And we look at this, this has a two barrel carburetor that was optional on this particular engine. There was a single barrel also possible. But look at the spark plugs or lack of them right here by the exhaust manifolds. Where are the spark plugs at? Where'd they go? They're inboard. They're up in here. The GMC 60 degree V6, the plugs go up top. The whole point was a compact engine, and believe it or not, in heavy gas truck applications, the exhaust manifolds glow so hot, they're almost orange, and they tend to melt plug wires. So, to have a shorter plug wire and a heat proof plug wire, the 60 degree engine family that were located up top, that's just some of the many weird things. Now, these engines were built in 305, 351, 379, 401, 432 and even 478 cubic inches. And those are all V6s. Now the 305 is only seen in pickup trucks, GMC only, never in Chevy. But it's one of those things that made GMC pickup trucks in the 60s different from Chevrolet, the V6 option. And again, that was a 305. This being a 5500 series bus, that's a 351. But again, you could also get these things all the way up to 478 cubic inches. It was also a V8 version of this thing and even a V12, the twin six with 702 cubic inches. Don't believe me? Well, here is 1968 GMC conventional models. This is the dealer brochure. What a beautiful truck that is. What a tough looking truck. Anyway, inside of this, this is a rundown. On the left hand side, that's the V6. And we can see on the left hand, 351, 401, 478. And the, the C and the M have to do with the carburetor. It's a single or a two barrel. This one's a two barrel, but on the right hand side, look at that 637 cubic inch V8 version of the 60 degree V6 that we see right here. So again, there was also, again, the 702 cubic inch V12, which was basically two of these V6s with the common crankcase. In fact, Jay Leno owned something called the Blastoline Special, which has one of those GMC 702 V12 engines in it. But again, this is the, uh, the next to smallest 351 cubic inch sized V6 used in this bus. So not a V8 at all. Now, some interesting things we see on this bus are, the fact that uh, these came, by the way, here's, oh, look at this some more. The brochure does tell us that there were optional, here's the front. Now this one here, we can see the, uh, the clamshell, the butterfly hood right there. And of course, there was also an optional tilt nose right here in fiberglass. And in fact, if you knew your GMC truck back in the day, the longer the hood, the more engine there was under it. I've seen some of these things with big fiberglass hoods that come this far, it's the V12 truck. But again, this one here uh, has the V6. But here's the thing, this steel clamshell hood is tiltable. These struts right here, there's a cotter pin with a little clevis right here. Take the cotter pin out, pull the clevis, and this is all rusty, but this would then detach. And this clip right here, this part would fold down and give you better access. The fenders stayed put, you could unbolt them. But with that said, take these two struts out, just a cotter pin and a pin, a clevis pin, and this folds down. The hood goes with it and you have pretty much full access to the top of the engine. And in fact, if you look right here, Shane, Super Shane Richardson, the cameraman and programmer, right down here, this is a rubber block. That's the pad right there that the front headlight support sits on when it's in its up position. But that's a uh, moot testimony. The hinges are down low in the front. So it's kind of a tilt nose, kind of a clamshell hood, whatever service needed to be done. You could, you could do it more easily with this type of uh, engineering and design. Now, one thing I was puzzled on with GMC trucks is how the front hubs, burly Kelsey Hayes looking things, but they had this plate on them. 
I always wonder, what the hell's behind it? Well, this is what we have. Uh, the plate is a flat thing. It's, it's kind of strange to look at. It's nothing more than the standard uh, wheel bearing, the race, the nut, the cotter pin, the whole deal, the spindle. But again, I always wonder, what's behind that thing? Is it filled with liquid? Nah, just a little uh, standard spindle with a nut and a bearing, etc. So anyway, that's the story outside. Let's now go in. So we're going to shut down for a second because we're going to crawl through some junk to get inside this thing. But let's check out the Superior bus mounted to this 1968. 5500 series GMC. Hang on a second, we'll be right back. Now, as I mentioned, this one has a superior body. You gotta remember that General Motors and Ford and International, they didn't make bus bodies, they made the, the cabin chassis. Uh, but we see here, Superior Coach Corporation right here, Lima, Ohio, and Kosciuszko, Mississippi. And of course, uh, Superior was in business between 1909 and 1980, but there was also Bluebird, Wayne, and other companies, probably at least a dozen school bus companies located throughout the country that would then fulfill and create and finish out the uh, GMC uh, cabin chassis. But here we have the uh, instruments. Uh, this one, the speedometer goes to 80 miles per hour. Pickup trucks go to 100. I guess they didn't want to uh, in influence the driver to try that 100 mile an hour. But on the left hand side, the speedo goes to 80. And again, these probably would do that without too much trouble at all. And to the left of the steering wheel, that massive electronic console right there, all those switches for all the lights. And of course, you got to remember that school buses have lots of lights, but there's even switches for the left and right hand windshield wiper. Yes, they were actually divorced, left or right wiper. I guess the driver is sitting so close to the windshield, it's so big, you didn't really have to run both windshield wipers, but that's kind of a weird thing. Now, this one is a four-speed manual. Automatics and buses like this didn't arrive until the 19, late, late 70s, even in the 80s, but here it is the four-speed right here. So whoever the bus driver was, and quite often there were ladies, I found. When I was a kid, we had a lady named Pearl. She was our bus driver, southern lady. She goes, stay setting back there. Stay setting, Pearl. But she was a tough lady, and she drove a stick like no problem, like, like Ronnie Sox. But again, uh, the cool thing on these things is the mechanism here to close and open the door, this rod right here. I right, just do that routine right there. When I was a little kid, I always wanted to be the bus driver and do this. Now, this is not looking too good. That is something... <laughs> Something not happening here that's too good. But anyway, there we are. You can play bus driver. You ever see that joke? Here we go. I'm not a comedian. I'm going to try it. Bus driver, bus driver, open the door. Okay, that's the comedic moment for today. All right, let's continue. Uh, the one thing about buses built before 1977, there was actually a federal mandate to improve the safety on school buses. There were some tragic accidents that involved buses that flipped over. And after 1977, roof escape hatches became the, the norm. Uh, before that, uh, the way to get out of a bus that was in trouble was to try and crawl through these windows right here, which often, you know, you're not going to get out of that too easily. So if you turn around, Shane, to your right, that's the emergency door right there. Well, there was a tragic bus fire in Carrollton, Ohio in 1978, I believe, and it was a church bus, and it actually had a big cooler filled with drinks and ice blocking the back escape door. And so people were trapped in the bus and tragedy ensued. So anyway, this bus here, of course, being in 1968, was illegal for use in traveling or carrying students after 1978 or so, uh, as federal standards uh, improved. And it's, it's a good thing, frankly, you can't have dangerous buses. But with that said, who knew that you, know, you could get trapped in a bus and not be able to get out if there was an accident? But the one thing about buses and junkyards is that these aren't for carrying kids anymore. These are for storing parts dry and away from the elements. And uh, here at Burleson Auto Wrecking, they have all many, many buses with cool stuff inside. Here's a Chevy small block engine, two bolt mains on this one, no four bolts, which would be the additional center bolts right there, bigger caps, but again, a small block V8 engine block. Um, to the left here, kind of cool, set of Mercury Cougar hubcaps. And this is not the hubcap game, by the way, but some Mercury Cougar hubcaps right there. And this is kind of cool. You gotta wonder, where is the rest of this car? Looks like a 1970 one or two Chevelle SS. Was it a 454? Who knows? But again, buses can be great places to put things for internal storage and keep them dry. And Bernison Auto Wrecking has lots and lots of that. Another weird, look at this thing. Holy smokes. If you remember 1974, you remember the Mustang II. And here's the grill to one right here. This was probably a Mach 1 with the blacked out grill. But the Mustang II is the Pinto based of Mustang of 1974 through 78. They sold like hotcakes. They were actually very popular cars. But again, all these cities inside of the bus, the beauty here is that they're not exposed to the snow, the rain, the winter, all that kind of stuff. So they kind of tend to be in a suspended animation. And, and so is this lag tight paint on the roof. 
Look at that. Want to have a shower? I don't. Anyway, that's the story of a V6 powered school bus. Yeah, they made them. And it is true that some older buses in the 50s, 40s, 30s had straight six flathead engines with no power at all. But as you get into the 1960s, you know, highway use, you know, 55, 60 mile an hour cruising had to be a possibility. So the uh, GMC V6 was an answer to that with 351 cubic inches. It's not a Ford, by the way, it's a GMC V6. This bus had enough power to get out of its own way. But again, that little V6 could be had as a V12. And Ask Jay Leno will tell you all about it. His Blastoline special. Google it. There's got to be a video on that thing somewhere. But that's the story of this bus. And uh, we will be back from Burniston Auto Wrecking tomorrow with more Junkyard Crawl. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Tell your friends. And uh, we'll see you again tomorrow.